We have talked many times over the past couple of weeks about the level of partnership that has taken place with our federal officials, our local officials, and our police department to bring this to an end. And through all of this hard work, we identified several leads throughout the course of the weeks. But beginning within the past 24 to 36 hours, we started getting information on one person of interest that we continued to work on and continue to develop. And as we continued to do our investigations, this person of interest ultimately moved to being a suspect. And that's what we started focusing on was his involvement in these crimes. Late last night and early this morning, we felt very confident that this was the suspect in the bombing incidents that took place in Austin. We had surveillance teams looking for this suspect and we ultimately located the vehicle that this suspect was known to be driving and witnesses told us he was driving. And in fact, we found that at a hotel right up the road here in Round Rock. We had multiple officers from both the police department and our federal partners that took up positions around the hotel awaiting the arrival of our tactical teams because we wanted to have ballistic vehicles here so we could attempt to take this suspect into custody as safely as possible. While we were waiting for those vehicles to get here, much time had passed and the vehicle started to drive away. We began following the vehicle, again waiting to get the tactical uh, vehicles here so we could take this, uh, make a stop. However, the vehicle ended up stopping in the bar ditch on the side of the road behind us. As members of the Austin Police Department SWAT team approached the vehicle, the suspect detonated a bomb inside the vehicle, knocking one of our SWAT officers back and one of our SWAT officers fired at the suspect as well. The suspect is deceased uh, and has significant injuries from a blast that occurred from detonating a bomb inside his vehicle. We cannot name the suspect at this time because he has not been positively identified yet by the medical examiner and next of kin have not yet been notified. So there will be a lengthy investigation that will take place regarding the officer involved shooting. The investigation will be conducted by the Austin Police Department's Internal Affairs Unit with the Austin uh, Police Monitor participating as well for a review of compliance with departmental policy. There will be a concurrent criminal investigation that will take place by the Texas Rangers of the incident that occurred here tonight. Again, this is the culmination of three very long weeks for our community. And throughout these weeks, we've talked about the importance of remaining vigilant and looking out for each other. I want to continue that message as we stand here this morning though, because we don't know where this suspect has spent his last 24 hours. And therefore, we still need to remain vigilant to ensure that no other packages or devices have been left through the community. So as we go through the day today, we want the community to remain vigilant, but I also want to look at where we are now in Round Rock and remind our neighboring communities of Round Rock and Cedar Park and the other cities that we do not know where he has been in the past 24 hours and you're, we need your communities to remain vigilant as well. And again, if you see something that looks suspicious, if you see something that's out of place, if you see something that gives you concern, call 911 and let us know so that we don't experience any more tragedies in our communities because we've had far too many over the past three weeks. I again want to thank the tremendous support and participation that we have had from our federal partners. And since this is still an ongoing investigation, we're not going to release a lot of the specific uh, details that led to the incidents that occurred tonight. We did have one officer who was injured when that bomb detonated as he approached the vehicle, suffering minor injuries. And then we had one officer, as I mentioned early, that fired his weapon at the suspect. 
That officer has been with the Austin Police Department for 11 years and again is a member of our SWAT team. As is our standard practice, he will be placed on administrative duty while we conduct the necessary investigations into what happened here. Uh, I'm now going to turn it over for comments to Special Agent uh, Malisky of the uh, ATF. Thank you. Um, the unprecedented level of cooperation and partnership from the law enforcement agencies at the local, state, and federal level um, allowed each of our agencies to bring a skill set, different skill set to bear um, and identify this subject. And uh, fortunately tonight, we're able to bring this part of the investigation to a close. I also want to uh, thank the public who continue to support us and cooperate with us and continue to, to send in tips. Um, and as the chief said, we want them to continue to be vigilant. Um, we are concerned that there still may be other devices out there. We want to make sure that if people see suspicious packages or bags, um, they continue to call 911 and report that to the police um, so we can respond and deal with those packages. Thank you. I'd like to say today is a great day for law enforcement. I'd like to thank the partners. There's an exceptional relationship here in Texas and particularly in Austin. Chief Manley did an unbelievable job. The federal government brought the full resources of federal law enforcement here to solve this and to stop the injuring and the killing that was occurring. As the chief said, we're not done yet. It's a long day ahead. Uh, we are concerned that there may be other packages that are still out there. We need the public to remain vigilant especially today as we go through this investigation. We will be here as long as it takes with our partners to figure out exactly what happened, why it happened, and how it happened. And we're committed to staying here with the Austin Police Department for as long as it takes to make sure we understand exactly what happened here. Uh, I'd just like to say this is what law enforcement does every day in this country. The brave men and women of the Austin Police Department put their lives on the line tonight to stop this man from setting off bombs. As the chief said, one of their officers was hurt approaching the suspect as he detonated a second device. That's what law enforcement does every day in this country. They put their lives on the line to make sure that all of us are safe. And I'd like to commend the chief and his brave men and women that approached that subject's vehicle and stopped the subject from hurting anybody else. Thank you very much. I understand that the investigation is uh, continuing and that everyone still is urged to be vigilant and look for things that are out of place. But that said, uh, gentlemen, uh, on behalf of an incredibly thankful community, I just want to say thank you. And if you would pass that on to the, to the men and women uh, that you work with. Uh, uh, Chief Manley, uh, to you and to your officers, to this literally an army of both neighboring cities and state and federal agencies. Thank you. And I'd just like to close with just really a thought for the families in our community who lost loved ones or who had loved ones seriously hurt in these incidents. Our heart remains with you as you go through your healing process and your time of sorrow, and we stand by you and with you in your time of need. And with that, we'll open it up for questions. Chief, was, Finley, was the suspect Chief Finley, Austin resident? There may be more, was the more than in Austin one resident? suspects in, uh, involved. Are you still looking for other individuals who may be connected to this one, or was this a lone wolf? This investigation is still underway, so we cannot say that this was a act, an individual acting on their own. That's why this investigation will continue through the day, through the day or days coming. Are you still searching Without naming the, the suspect, facilities? can you give us at least some biographical details? Rough age was he an Austin resident? The individual involved in this incident was a 24-year-old white male, and we're not going to give out any information regarding his residence. Any accomplices, sir? Sorry. Maybe, maybe as I said, as I said, this investigation is ongoing. We want to make sure that we have confirmed that he either acted alone or if there were any accomplices that we identify them. Does this date back, this individual date back to March 2nd? 
We believe that this individual is responsible for all incidents that have taken place in Austin starting on March 2nd, those that occurred since then as well. Are you still searching the FedEx facility? Sir, are you still searching the FedEx facilities? There is an operation going on in Shirts, Texas, I believe, at that warehouse. Again, wanting to make sure that that warehouse is safe in addition to the fact that a bomb detonated in that warehouse and it takes a while to process a post-blast investigation like that. So that's going to take a while for that one to be cleared. Chief, we have a why, we have a why, Chief. Sorry. Is it the FedEx package that led you to this conference? There were several leads that led us to this person. We had a lot of evidence that came to us via uh, video sources as well as witnesses. Was he ever on your radar prior to this? This was a subject that we had developed over uh, the course of the investigation, but we became very interested in him over the past couple of days. Any Do we motive? have a why? Do we? You know, that's the one thing we don't have right now is a motive behind this. We do not understand what motivated him to do what he did, and that will also be part of the continuing investigation as we try to learn more about him and to understand why he took the actions that he did. Was he in contact with the bomb? Sorry. Was he on his way to deliver another bomb? We don't know whether he was on his way to deliver another bomb. It is obvious that he had one with him, and that's the one that he detonated uh, in the vehicle as we approached. Hey, Jacob, hey, 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 can we ask you in regards to how this motive or how the operations of the bombs evolved? It, you know, it started off packaged bombs, it moved to trip wires, it moved to FedEx. You know, it doesn't seem like the same guy, so why are you so confident that this is the same guy, and or is this just an example of a person, a suspect, evolving? Again, as we've said all along, we didn't want to give out specific descriptions of the types of packaging the initial bombs were in because we knew that there was the potential he would change his methods, and that is, in fact, what occurred here. We do believe that all of these are related and that he is responsible for these based on the similarities that we have seen in all of the devices and in the evidence we're finding from those that did detonate. The FedEx packages, uh, we're not going to identify who they were being mailed to. However, we have been in contact with them. Did you have any contact with the suspect during the shooting? Was there any contact with the suspect before that any device exploded tonight? No, we had, again, we had uh, found him in the parking lot of a hotel in this neighborhood behind us, and we did not contact him. Again, we wanted this to come to a peaceful resolution tonight, but we knew how dangerous this situation was given what he had done in our community leading up to tonight. So we were waiting to get the best assets in place with our tactical teams and our ballistic vehicles so that we had a, the best chance possible to take him into custody. However, we were not afforded that opportunity when he started driving away and we could not let him get anywhere into the community and that's why we ended up having a, an interaction on the frontage road behind us. Did he drive away because he saw police? I mean, do you, or did he have any, any evidence of that? I, I don't know why he drove away. The officers that were there had been watching him for quite some time, so nothing had changed there to where I believe that he saw them, but that's something we'll never know. Is Does he, he have a military, military background, Chief? Don't know what his background is. Last question. Do you know the motive at this point? Do you know what motivated him at this point now that you've been able to put this to this point? No. Again, as we stated earlier, we do not know what the motive was behind that. And hopefully as we continue this investigation, we will uncover some facts so that we can try and understand, although this is something that there is no rationale for, but we can try and understand what his motive was. Thank you very much.